very close. So uh, these players have played against each other. They know each other's strengths and weaknesses, and this might be a very, very exciting best of three indeed. Too bad it's only a best of three. Uh, but it, again, it's a round robin format, so all the matches are best of three. At the end, we tally up the score. Uh, but we know for now that these two players are way at the head of the group. They both have three wins out of three matches, and whichever one wins this match therefore has the most wins, and will be flying to Baku. Let's see it, Bella Noir. Let's see it. Let's see it indeed. Well, you guys could not have picked better colors. Purple versus pink. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Spawning in the top right location. Playing for Team AT Gaming. Sponsored by CM Storm. It is Yona, the pink Zerg player. And in the bottom left corner of the map, uh, the current reigning uh, WCS, no, no, wait, wait, the reigning DSCL, nearly as competitive, the reigning DSCL Open Champion, it is Uthermal, also playing for AT Gaming, uh, also, of course, sponsored by Cooler Master, the same as Dutch Starcraft, so thank you, Cooler Master, for sponsoring all of this awesome Starcraft-related activities in the Netherlands. And this is the final best of three, the deciding best of three, to, to decide who flies to Baku, Azerbaijan in November to play in the World Cup Finals. Indeed. And look at this. You, we did see when playing what? against... When Yona played against, let's say, inferior opponents, mm -hmm. he didn't scout... Or, or, well, let me put it like this. Against other opponents, he didn't scout with the drone. Now he does. You know why? Because he knows you throw more lots to proxy mm. rides. I I know he does. Yeah, he, it's not as bad as a uh, PB Nori, <laughs> <laughs> but still, yeah, he likes it. Yeah, PB Nori pretty much does it almost every single game. <laughs> Staying true to his name. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if PB Nori actually had a second account where he played normal macro <laughs> most of the time and just used the PB Nori accounts to proxy rides everybody. <laughs> So, Yona knows what is up, he knows the barracks have been cancelled, he did scout the barracks in the main of Euthermal, so he can go ahead and get that 15 hatch or 16 hatch down, however he pleases. Probably gonna go into a pool and then uh, take a gas afterwards. Unless he wants to, again, uh, proceed gasless, which he hasn't done a single time yet, but mm. looks like he will be. Doing it, doing it now. So four queen opening coming out from Yona. This will allow him to spread his creep quicker towards the third base and towards the watchtowers as well, and defend very well versus uh, Reapers and Hellions. Cool. All right. And I'm, I'm, I must say, I'm excited to see that this is kind of like a, a regular game. Um, uh, I like cheese, but it ends quickly. I want to see these players at the top of their level. Uh, playing in their comfort zones, and then uh, and then see what they can do. Hmm. Interesting from Euthermal. Interestingly, no gas being taken. Usually, Euthermal. Oh, there we go. Double gas <laughs> at the same time. You psychic. I was just yeah. I was just about to say. You know, usually Euthermal opens with a Reaper. He just likes that opening in TVZ. At least from the last time I remember. Uh, this time around he opened with, uh, he was kind of forced to adjust his build order because those proxy racks were scouted out. So, gas has come a little bit later, but the factory timing is still going to be pretty much relatively, you know, it's, it's going to be there. Uh, well, it's just going to be later, but it's still going to be on time with this opening because Euthermal pretty much has been forced into a gasless open. What I'm much. wondering, actually, it's kind of like a meta question, not not concerning this specific game, but uh, so now that you Thermal and Yona are in the same team, because you think Yona pretty recently joined, well, in between the DSL finals and now he joined AT Gaming. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering if, if that means that they've practiced together more. I mean, obviously they've been playing each other on the ladder for a long time, but I'm wondering that, that now that they're in the same team, whether they've you know, been consistently practicing together, and whether that leads uh, to this game being, you know, um, kind of uh, impossible for us to read, because that that's what you sometimes get between teammates. They know each other so well that the mind games sometimes get, you know, completely strange, and you see people do things which you think, this is impossible, it can never work, but because they've been playing each other so often, it can. 
but then it's very hard to realize that as a caster. So I'm wondering if we're gonna see strange things happening that shouldn't work. Um, yeah, we might, but this usually, this usually. I mean, the moment you can notice it the most is probably the early game and the openings. Uh, maybe the mid game, but once the once the match gets into that mid game and late game stage, uh, you kind of I, I I don't I don't know if you can notice. Um, players playing according to who they're playing against as opposed to uh, noticing it early on in the game as we as we've seen with the proxy racks you know it's uh, because the game becomes so complex whereas in the beginning you have only a couple of things that you can do and some players tend to gravitate towards one type of opening than the other so if you know that player you can you can uh, play to it So, standard four Hellions out on the map, Euthermal playing very defensively, controlling the map with the Hellions, just forgetting to lower the depots. I really love the fact of how he's denying scouting uh, for Yona. I don't, I don't think Yona actually got a single bit of scouting information from the, from the bases of Euthermal. He's uh, hiding everything from him. So at this point, Yona doesn't know how many barracks uh, Euthermal is adding on. Are there a double engineering base somewhere? Is it a single engineering base somewhere behind? What kind of build is this? And this might be a hell bad build. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm sorry to say we have a, we have an armory oh. coming up before the engineering bay. Now there's only one reason for a Terran player to do that to make hell bats. Okay. There we go. And we also see Overlord speed. Is that for scouting or...? Yeah, it's just in general, you know, there are Vikings on the hunt for overlords, right. overlords, so you kind of just want to want those overlords to be faster, to not lose all of them. Okay. And here come the Hellbats, there are only a couple of queens, there are Bailings already prepared, oh. however. Oh, very, very inefficient there. Still three Hellbats remaining, and good pickup there by Euthermal as well with the Marines. And I think, uh, you know, now with no Bailings, Whoa. Screens transfusing each other. Yeah, but this can still do a lot of damage because those 40 links that are just about to hatch, they'll be coming in in small groups from all sides. So Yeah, but they get a nice surround for the first uh, little wave there, and the second wave, I think, definitely forces the retreat. Yeah, there we go. Huh. Still, 41 links died against 10 Halbats, 5 Marines, and a Medivac. Yeah, okay. Not a bad trade, if you ask me. No, but it's not devastating, I'd say. Oh, but this could be deadly. There, are, There's actually no army here for oh. Euthermal, oh, and the bunker yeah, right. is completely empty. There are Banelings morphing in on his doorstep. He sees it with the Mavac at the last second, so he will be able to, uh, I don't know, at least pull the SCVs. What is he going to do? Yeah, he pulls, yeah, like you said, he pulls it. Did he lift his command center too? Uh, he doesn't have to, I don't oh, think. He upgrades, he could lose all the upgrades. Yeah, he could, and I think he, he actually will. Oh man, that sucks. I mean, there's he doesn't have enough units to. Uh... Oh, actually he uses the banelings on the upgrades, thinking, well, I'm gonna get these for sure. And actually, that was know. a good call. I think that was really a good call. This is going to set your thermal back so much. Yona uh -huh. having his one one upgrades almost completed. Yeah. If he goes into two two immediately, he will have a huge window of opportunity where he'll have uh, better upgrades than uh, than the Terran player. I mean, just look at the minimap. Look at this purple, or as I should say pink, this pink beast at the top of the minimap, which is Yona, who just reset the upgrades for, for Euthermal. I mean, it's, it's hard to think that Euthermal still has the guts to even go up against Yona, but I mean, we know he's done so in the past and actually beaten him in previous encounters. Um, and in fact, we might still say that, uh, yeah, Euthermal is, is the favorite to win the, this series. Uh, but it's it's... It's going to be very close. This is not going to be like the previous series where Euthermal faced the other uh, these players. This this is Euthermal's hardest match of the day. I'm I'm very sure of that. Yeah, that is true. This is uh, Yona is by far his toughest opponent today. Uh, but he's getting his third base. Uh, has he? Yeah, he definitely has rebuilt his engineering base in the main base. Mm. Uh, Yona. He's getting a Spire. The Spire is a little, is a tad bit late. I have to say, usually those mutalists enter the battle way before now. 
you know, uh, having to build so many Zerlings and uh, then do the counter-attack with those Banelings. Which, you know, that that's a call you make. I mean, do I waste the gas on those Banelings and risk not getting much done? Or do I not morph those Banelings and go straight into his fire? Big, big drop coming in. Yeah, that and since there are really there are no overlords on that side of the map, this was I was this gonna say spotted. how amazing Jonas creep spread was, but he didn't spread creep in his main base, and I think he's gonna suffer heavily for it. Look yeah, at this. The drop comes in, gets the queen immediately. There are some rings and bailings though. Ooh, yeah. Prepared. Where did they come from? I think wow. Yona must have seen something with the uh, with the creep tumors because. I don't, I don't, I don't think he would have known otherwise. He's even going to save this fourth base from going down. Whoa. Nice job there. And, and in the uh, main base, he got the widow mine by burrowing his spore call right yeah. next to it. Wow, good defense from Yona. Very good defense. Those mutalisks are on the way finally, but I fear they they are entering the game too late to make any difference. But here is the timing: two two upgrades. They're just about, ju just less than a minute away from being completed. Yep, 40 in-game seconds left. You only just have to hold on until then, and then you have uh, evened up the upgrades. Oh no, actually, oh, he has a, a much bigger lead because he reset it before. So then it'll be 2-2 against 1-1. So yeah. this, this is your thermal's time to push, and he knows it, maybe. Maybe he knows. I mean, uh, he, he wants to get that fourth down. Uh, Yona is waiting. He doesn't want to engage. He's there building more and more lanes. I think he's realizing that he may have an advantage over here. And if he can engage with enough lanes and main lanes as he is. Look at the free splitting from your thermal. This is like this is I've never seen Marines so evenly spread out over one field of vision. Yeah, it's it's amazing, isn't it? Now Yona is too too afraid of those widow mines over there. He just does not want to lose all of those banings to a couple of widow mine hits. What he doesn't realize is there's there are only two widow mines there. Only two widow mines with this army. Okay, now more are coming in. Three widow mines. That's not gonna do a whole lot. Here goes, though. One widow mine goes off, and another one gets taken out. Still enough banings remaining and Yona, is he is he on top of his uh, index though? Because uh, the r rate of reinforcements is not as high as I would have expected off of, well, five hatcheries pretty yeah. much. Yeah, you're right. Let's see what is. Uh, so look at the units. He has 11. Now he has. Uh, he's only four or five larvae at the moment. Uh, no, just one. So yeah, you're right. He's running low on larvae. Yeah. He's coming in again though. The widow might. The Widow Mines are almost gone, still three remaining, but Yoda is so afraid to push into that. Yeah. Now he now he maybe he will go in with the with the Mutalisks. Oh nice sight there on the medevac. Yeah. Wow, that was so on point. That helps. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. It kind of feels like U Thermal has troops so wide open that that a big ball of Zerg uh, uh, Zerg units could just run through it, but now you want to pull back, things better of it, says, well, I'll just skip this base, because I've got another one building at the top of the of the map, but, yeah. And I think this is the point where Euthermal just keeps on pushing and pushing and pushing. Uh-huh. And this is, uh, he's not getting a fourth command star, and he's added on three additional barracks. We've seen him do this before, the endless push of Doom, where he, got, where he just keeps on rallying units mm -hmm. across the map. From a three base economy, look at the three marines reinforcements yeah. over the map. It's like 12 marines per cycle, some marauders uh, sprinkled into the mix, and he's getting his upgrades. So the window the window is closing here for Yona. Yeah. Lots of money in the bank for your thermal, though. But, you know, still, he's uh, also spending a lot of it. Yeah, but Yona is just not macroing well enough. I mean, his supply is below that of the Terran player most of the time. Uh -huh. Even even when there's no fighting going on, so... Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I, I feel you, you Thermal needs to stop this, this endless harass. Or, I mean, not this endless harass, this endless push. Somehow. Maybe cut it off, you know, at the reinforcements, something like that. Because this creep spread is so good that you can see all these reinforcements coming. Or most yeah, of them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Sending a couple of links uh, yeah, across the map go. to run by, uh, but I think these, uh, you know, there's so many units coming out of those bases that all it takes for uh, Euthermal to take care of those links is select those units and hit S. Right. 
So a couple of SCVs go down at the third base, but Pew Thermal is dangerously close to Jonas' main base. Uh -huh. Ooh. That ball of Mutilus just took a lot of damage, I think. Uh, actually, they did not, but they uh, could. That Widowmite almost like went off. <laughs> it was the, the Overseer I saw at Nemig. And we, we have a couple of swarm hosts here as well. Six more being built. This could drive you thermal back for a while, but I don't think it will. Okay. Do you think it will trigger some kind of response from your thermal other than just to keep pushing? Yeah, I think he'll just go for, for the attack. Alright, okay. Once he sees the swarm host, I think he'll just go for it. Because he knows there's a lot of gas being dumped into it. Oh, but look at Yona! Perfect wow. moment to strike, but Uthormo reacting instantly and pulling back all of his units. Yona staying alive for the time being. And he could actually stabilize with this swarm host. Now that he's not under such a pressure, mm -hmm. he needs to focus on defending his bases, though. Yeah, definitely. Because main, of course, mined out, uh, natural nearly mined out, so he is running on two bases. Uh, of course, Euthermal also running on two bases. Um, or, well, okay, so where Yona has two and a half base, Euthermal's on one and a half base. That is good, but yeah. Terra and Summer have this ability to stick it out on, on less bases for a long time. Ooh, but Mules, man. Yeah, I'll have mules. But look at this, though. I'm not sure if, if your thermals push. I mean, it looks very, very strong. There's so many swarm hosts here. If they can get another round off before they get start getting sniped. And I think this can be pushed back. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, I think this can be pushed back. There are not that many widow mines with these uh, with these marines here to protect them, and uh, the mules oh. suddenly getting an advantage in the look air. At the supply as well. This is like, well, there we go. GT. Oh, Yona! <laughs> oh. Whoa. 